Hey everybody, Clint here, T here. We went to go see Terminator Genesis. Yeah. T, do you remember the first thing that I said to you when we walked out of the theater? I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. I just don't really know what to say about it. Here's the interesting thing, though. I think we both hated it equally, but it's the opposite of what happened with Jurassic World. <laughs> we hated it equally, and I was way madder about it than you were. And this time, we hated it equally, and I think I'm the one who's less mad. Because we've talked a lot on the channel recently about sort of mediocrity in movies and right. how, like, we're kind of tired of movies that are just fine. Yeah. And that's... That's what I felt about Jurassic World. I feel like I've been a little rougher on Jurassic World than I actually intended to be because mm. I enjoyed watching the movie. It was one of those movies that's in that middle ground of like you can pick it way apart if you feel like it, but ultimately I had a good enough time watching it. Terminator, on the other hand, there it's just nothing. Like and that's what I'm so confused about this about how I feel about this movie because I wasn't mad. I didn't have fun. And I don't remember most of it. Yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been well under 24 hours since we've seen it. I've already forgotten large chunks of the movie. The, the movie, to me, is just so full of non-choices. Mm -hmm. You know, it, there was nothing original. There was nothing fresh about this movie at all. Even the set pieces... The, the bus flipping, the, the bus, like, falling. Like, I'll go all the way back to the, to the Lost World <laughs> when we saw the first time, like, a big thing fell around people who were clinging right. onto it, you know? Yeah. Like, Everything was something we've either seen in one of the other Terminator movies or we've just seen in movies. Yeah. I feel like the reason that I don't want to be mad about how bad this movie was is because I don't think anybody made it bad on purpose. Mm. I don't think that there was anybody behind the wheel of this. It was too many cooks in the kitchen is the feeling I get. I've, I've heard some people that are mad because it resets the, the, the Terminator canon. Now the events of Terminator 2 never officially happened according or to this Terminator. movie. And so people are like mad that it's taken a dump on the original movies, but I don't think anybody meant to do that. I, I The word reboot and reset and restart or, or reimagining, re re I'm sure all of those words floated around in the development meetings, but nobody realize the consequences of them or thought that people might be upset by those consequences. So I don't, I can't even muster anger at them for making a choice that I disagree with mm -hmm. because I don't think they made that choice on purpose. Every other thing in the movie is such a non-choice that I don't think they even made that choice, right? <laughs> I think that the studio was just in a severe panic about what they were doing here. It just seems like they they didn't know how to get this franchise going again and then they just like put all of their ideas in and didn't actually make any one clear point of view any one clear decision about the point they, the point of view they wanted to take they obviously took that weird uh, marketing strategy route with the big reveal of john connor yeah. as a terminator with one of the last trailers that came out it's just like wait why are they revealing their shia malayalanian twist in the trailer, right. and I think it was just panic. I think the studio just had one of those situations where, they, where they're like, look, this is a turd, and we're fucked. Maybe we need to try something more drastic. Because here's the, the question, though, is like, would you have enjoyed the movie more had you not known that twist was coming? That's an interesting question. I think maybe, but I almost think possibly not, because in a weird way, I feel like the movie was almost disrespectful to the Terminator mythology. Like, it was just so, like, I was, like, clutching my pearls. I was like, this is just so indignified. The, the other question that it really raises for me, and, and beyond, like, like, this is a movie where there, there are infinite things. Every frame of this movie you can call bullshit on. Um, so I don't even want to continue down that path. But, yeah. like, on a, on a, on a, it raises questions for me, like, why do we care about the Terminator? The first Terminator was, was great sci-fi for the time. I don't think it holds up too well. But it gave birth to Terminator 2, which, which is, is on great. the Mount Rushmore of action movies. Right. Like, it's a perfect... It is the Godfather 2 of action movies. Correct, yes. And then everything else Terminator-wise that we've gotten has largely been garbage. Mm -hmm. And I know Sarah Connor Chronicles, there are some people that are fans of that. Uh, I never really got into it. Yeah, yeah me neither. The point is... What else in the Terminator mythology are we so fascinated by that we keep doing it again? Because what it doesn't have, what the Terminator franchise doesn't have, is a real live auteur 
or an artist that has a vision that says like, here's the story I think we need to tell with this. What it does have instead are companies that keep buying the rights from other companies that have swung and missed at making a Terminator mm -hmm. movie. Yeah. And so that's why I just don't see why we want Terminator anymore. Like it's, right. there's one event in the Terminator mythology that's important. Mm -hmm. It was covered excellently in Terminator and Terminator 2. And then there's been these like weird little re rehashes of it since that don't matter. Right. And I just don't get it. I mean, neither of us wants to get into like spoiler heavy, spoiler heavy territory, uh, but just generally speaking, there were so many issues with just lack of character development, completely stereotypical, boring characters, ridiculous recurring gags that were so jive that they were offensively, yeah. offensively unfunny. And, you know, it was just lazy. It, 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 it borders on, like, lazy filmmaking along with just lack of confidence filmmaking. And I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick little spoiler warning because I'm going to give you an example that perfectly encapsulates what's wrong with this movie. Spoiler alert. Go away. Come back. Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor have a moment where they realize that they can never be together because if the product of them being together is John Connor every time. Who we know time, from the trailer is a Terminator. Who we know from the trailer is a Terminator. If they get together and John Connor is the result every time, they can't do it. They owe it to the future to not be able to get together because that's the risk that they're gonna run that the future will be inevitable if they create John Connor. And then at the end of the movie, they get together. They raise all these questions and then they don't deal with them. Mm -hmm. In fact, they raise the question of who sent Pops, the old Terminator, back to when Sarah Connor was nine years old. Yeah, by the way, if you weren't aware, Terminator is called Pops, Pops. the whole time. So uh, that's a reason enough for it to, to be a piece of shit. Right. So they, they raise the question, it was like, oh, I wonder who sent you back. They, that's literally a line that John Connor asks in the movie. We, they never answer it. Mm -mm. They never discuss it after that. Yeah. And everything at the end of the movie is so wrapped up. It's not like they're saving that for the other part of the trilogy. Because they did mention at some point that they were planning on a trilogy. I think this is such garbage that they audibled and like, canceled the trilogy and yeah. just cut their losses. Because the movie is bookended with VO that sort of ties everything up in a little bow. Now, if for some reason you are still curious after hearing our thoughts on it, I say go ahead and see it. Because quite honestly, if I had seen this review of someone else saying all these things, I probably still would have been curious to see it because I just love Terminator and I'm always hopeful, but I'm going to warn you, you're not going to be pleased. I really think the reason to go see this movie is to have the conversation about what we're doing with our IP as an industry. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> you know, because I really see no need to keep revisiting the Terminator. And I don't understand why we all keep going back to it because everything's been bad outside of the first two. Yeah. Because James Cameron was a director who had a specific vision and he had things to say about it and he was able to execute it well. Uh, ever since then, it's been a production company winds up getting the rights, decides it's time to make another Terminator movie. Mm -hmm. And that we don't need. Mm -hmm. But look, that's what we think about Terminator Genesis. Unfortunately, uh, go see it for yourself. Tell us down in the comments how heartily you disagree with us or yeah. agree with us. Seriously, we want to know because it's an interesting conversation because of what it does to the world of the Terminator. Right. At, like to the canon of the Terminator, like what does it do? How does that impact your future plans to participate in the Terminator franchise? Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments down below. Click like and subscribe. Stick around for more movie news on Cinefix Now.